If you've ever used TurboTax before, you probably remember a part of the process that looked something like this, where the program would have you wait for a few seconds while it claimed to double check your tax returns before you filed. What you probably don't know though, is back in 2017, The Atlantic took a closer look at TurboTax's source code, and what they found was actually pretty interesting. That animation was fixed. It did not appear to be communicating with TurboTax's servers once it began playing, and it always took the same amount of time to complete, regardless of the user. Basically, it appeared that TurboTax's developers had inserted this delay for the user experience. It's called an artificial wait, and it's not just TurboTax. Remember when Facebook launched its privacy checkup a few years back? That friendly little cartoon robot with the stethoscope would have you wait for a few seconds while it scanned through your profile and offered you personalized feedback on your privacy settings? Yep, that was a fake wait too. Fast Company revealed that Facebook's massive server infrastructure could perform your privacy checkup almost instantly. So what could prompt tech companies to do this? Well, it turns out that you're probably thinking about waiting all wrong. Most of us assume waiting is bad, but the reality is much more complicated. In many cases, people expect to wait, and if that expectation is not met, speed can actually undermine their trust in the final product. The goal for almost every company is to deliver experiences that are great for people. And most of the time that means something that's really fast, but your experience also has to meet people's expectations. So if I go into a nice restaurant and order a steak and it comes in 30 seconds, that breaks my expectation. And I might start to wonder what's happening in the kitchen. That same principle can apply in tech. Computers can run incredibly fast. And in some cases you actually have to slow the service down. Steven Huber has worked on the user design experience for media, technology, and telecommunications companies. He says he stumbled across artificial wait times by accident when working for a major cell phone provider. We were told to build a plan optimizer. The user would tell us a few bits of information and we would then find the best service plan for them based on that stuff. Mathematically, at least, it's not that complicated. It ran instantaneously and gave them very accurate results. But when Steven's team started testing this plan optimizer they were so proud of with users, they got a big surprise. Everybody hated it, and we couldn't figure out why for a while. We finally realized, if you are gonna say, let me check that for you, and then you press the button and it immediately acts, it turns out people don't trust it. Steven's team sat there scratching their heads for a few days until he said, so wait, what if we had a delay? So that's all we did, we added a random delay, and then we started seeing people actually interested. They became engaged in it. Literally, most of the users leaned into the screen, like, ooh, what's it doing? And then we're terribly excited to see the results. That excitement in Steven's testing alludes to another reason developers might use these artificial wait times. A little wait can not only help prevent a user from disliking or distrusting an app, but can also make the user value that app more. Waiting can create suspense, hyping up the anticipation of results. It can also draw focus to all the work the app is doing on the user's behalf, increasing the perceived value of those results. This phenomenon is called the labor illusion. Ryan Buell and Michael Norton from Harvard Business School coined the term. It all started with a visit to the early version of Kayak.com. Buell and Norton noticed that the site had a fun little animation that showed users, in real time, all the airlines the algorithm was searching. They wondered how this impacted the user experience, so they ran some experiments with a homemade, generic version of the Kayak site that tested different search scenarios. What they found is users can actually prefer waiting for results when that waiting is accompanied by the animation telling them what the algorithm is doing, even over getting the results instantly. But they also soon realized that this information didn't even have to be real to make that enhanced value stick. In short, just creating the illusion of the site laboring by listing off airline names during a wait can increase the perceived value of the results. So now we can see why developers might have an incentive to insert fake wait times into apps. But the presence of little illusions like these got some experts thinking. Is all this ethical? Professor Eitan Adar from the University of Michigan and a few of his colleagues from Microsoft pioneered research on this question back in 2013. The way we think about it from the ethics perspective is who benefits? So am I actually doing something in the interest of the user? Are they better off um, given the way I've implemented these things? For Aton, it all really boils down to whether it's a harmless benevolent deception or a harmful malevolent one. So what about our TurboTax example? Was that benefiting the end user? 
That little artificial weight with its claims of double and triple checking the results could obviously increase the perceived value of the experience, which in turn could help sell more TurboTax. But building confidence in the product here might help users as well. With things like money, right? If it came back within a second and said, nope, sorry, I can't find anything. You will feel worried. You will start looking through um, the documents much more closely. Um, you will potentially go out and like make tweaks on your own, which might result in you filing the wrong taxes. So there might be some cost in you um, feeling like the software is not doing what it's supposed to do. So these weights can be helpful and a little bit worrisome. Just knowing about them, though, can change the way that we think about technology. I think a lot of us have this idea in our heads that computers are sort of infallible, that they're sort of involuntarily truthful. But even this video's quick look at artificial weights can show us that the reality is much more complicated. Instead, developers can bake their own human qualities into these systems, whether that's an inspired design experience or a fib here or there. Knowing this can nip a lot of misconceptions about technology in the bud, ensuring that those little benevolent deceptions remain just that, benevolent, rather than taking on a life of their own. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, help us out by liking, subscribing, and dropping us a comment. And to stay updated on Cheddar's latest, hit the bell next to that subscribe button too.